Hello, my name's Mel. Welcome to my world. And if you're new to my channel, it's all about off-grid, go anywhere, sleep anywhere, stealthy camper vans. And today, I'm going to be tackling rust on this Mercedes Sprinter. Now, if you own a Mercedes Sprinter, you will know only too well they do kind of suffer a little bit from rust. But don't worry, I'm going to show you exactly how to deal with the rust using simple hand tools, nothing fancy, using aerosol cans as well. You don't need a compressor as long as you buy the right products. So uh, let's take a look at the products I'm going to be using in this video to show you how I'm going to deal with this rust. Now there is a lot of rust on this van, there's a lot more down this side as well. But um, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to tackle this bit here so uh, I can show, show you how I, how I treat rust basically. So let's take a look at the products. Right, so um, first thing you're going to need to do is to remove the rust, the loose rust. And to do that, this is pretty much the only tool you're going to need. It's a grinder with a, a wire wheel on it. Now you can just use a wire brush if you want, but I recommend getting one of these. It's a lot quicker and it's a lot more thorough. So once you've got rid of all the loose rust, you want to treat it to make sure that rust doesn't come back. To do that, I simply use this stuff. Now, um, all you need to do is paint this on. You just paint it on, it is water based. And you can put it in a little sprayer, which is what I normally do, but for this video I'm just going to paint it on. Um, but if you get one of these little sprayers that you get in those aeroplane travel packs, you can tip that in. But do make sure you label it up, because <laughs> it is toxic, highly toxic. So this simply just sprays on once you've got all the loose rust off, and then this, this treats it and stops it coming back, theoretically. If you want to be really thorough, you can always use this stuff. And this stuff takes strips all the rust away. Um, it does take about three hours and you need to paint over it immediately otherwise it just goes the, the metal's left bare and it'll just come back again that's why i like to use this because you can actually leave it for a little while um, there's no rush to paint over it because this leaves a coating and it does work i've used this on old volkswagens and never had any issues with the rust coming back um yeah i've got a couple of these <laughs> i've thought it's a sprinter right so once you've treated the rust stop it coming back um, if there's any real bad pits or um, loads of metal missing, you're going to need to treat that with filler. So you put a layer of filler over it and rub it down. And I've got this small tub of filler. <laughs> After all, it is a sprinter, so I figured I might need a bit. Um, yeah, this is like Easy Sand body filler, available from most uh, car DIY stores. Now for the bigger holes, if there are any big holes in it, I've got this small tub of uh, fiberglass filler this is the same as that but it's got fiberglass in it so you can bridge gaps <laughs> so hopefully i don't come across with me but i'll put that just in case so once you've treated the rust you put your filler over you flatten it down you then want a bit of primer so a bit of grey primer um again this is a, a chromatic as you can see i've got this from a professional paint shop it's always worth going to a professional place rather than going to somewhere like alfred's because you can buy this good products there and once we've primed it and flattened it down again, we then treat it with base coat. This is this is basically the silver. Now silver is one of the worst colours to blend because there's a lot of black pigment in silver. And if you put it on too fast, you will actually see black shadows in the paintwork. So when using this uh, base coat, you put on small light, light layers at a time. Just dust it on a little bit at a time and gradually build it up. If you try and put too much on, you will get um, black streaks in it which is a big mistake a lot of people make when painting silver. So more about that later. So once you've got your base coat on, you're going to need lacquer. So this is clear cut, clear coat lacquer. Now when painting in the middle of a panel, normally you would paint the whole panel, but because this is a sprinter and the panels are pretty big, I'm going to blend the lacquer in. And to do that, to melt, it literally melts the lacquer to lacquer, stops you getting that ring with around it you use uh, pro blend and what this does is blends the lacquer into the new lacquer into the old lacquer very good product um but again i'll show you that later on so they're the products yeah that's pretty much it all, that's all you need just a, a small selection of products <laughs> right so let's put the camera down there and i'll shut this door and i'll show you how i'll do it <laughs> So let's take a close up look at this rust that I'm going to be treating today. There you go. As you can see, it's not too bad. It's just surface rust. 
there's a little bit here in the corner as well but this is the main bit here and there's a tiny little bit there that I didn't notice so what I'm going to do I'm going to mask it up across here all the way along here and up here like that and I'm actually going to paint the whole thing in the end I've decided not to blend it I'll just paint the whole thing but down the side here as you can see there's plenty more to do there's this panel here again it's all below this line there's a little bit of rust there so I can do that um, this bit here this is where I'm going to have to blend it but um, today I'm just going to concentrate on everything that's below this line because I want to make the most of the day the corners of the door needs doing as well these doors and this door here so hopefully I'm going to take care of all this today so the first thing I need to do is get this and grind all that off of there now I'm not going to film this in case I've damaged my lens on my camera because <laughs> a lot of stuff does fly off when you use one of these and it's always a good idea to wear safety goggles when doing this as well so I'm going to do that now but I'm going to turn the camera off because like I say I don't want to risk damaging the lens on my camera right so now I've ground all the rust away I've literally painted it with my crust as you can see I've used this and it goes on white simply put it on with a paintbrush and it goes on white and when it dries it goes black and it literally does leave like a black crusty layer over the rust and that stops that rust coming back through um, and once it's dry you can just put primer or filler straight over the top of it that's the nice thing about this stuff once you've put it on you don't have to do any more literally just put filler over the top and then a bit of primer and I've shown you what I've done down the rest of the van as well I've done a little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit here <laughs> a little bit there that's a bit worse than I thought it was but it don't matter because I've got some uh, fill it to go in there, maybe a bit of fiberglass as well and the door as well, and that's quite bad, there's a bit, actually a hole there so I will put some filler in that definitely um, but now I've got to wait for that to dry off, it does take about an hour to dry so while that's drying, I want to go and have a cup of coffee, back in a minute so I've finished my coffee, come out and it's starting to rain isn't it? it's actually started to rain, so what I've done because I don't want to leave the metal exposed to the elements I've just put primer over it for now just to protect it um, and hopefully when it stops raining I can carry on so as you can see, if you take a close, closer look at this you can see all, all the pits it's all pitted where the um, metal's corroded away so I will need to put a little bit of filler over that just to fill those little holes in and smooth it all out and make it nice but like I say, it's starting to rain so I'm going to have to finish this video another day so finally it stopped raining and I managed to get out here and put some filler over it. Now I've literally just put a thin layer of filler over there just to get rid of the little pitted parts of the metal that the rust has eaten away into. And it's left it all dimply. So this little smudge of filler will get rid of that. Now all I've got to do is rub this down using fine um, sandpaper and then put some more primer over it and then paint it. So um, I'll put you over there somewhere and I'll just carry on with that. So to smooth this down, I simply use DA discs. Um, now I'm not going to use a DA because uh, it doesn't really warrant it. Um, DA is basically an all, all sander and it runs off compressed air, my one does. But my mate's got he's my compressor so I'm going to do it by hand. I'm going to use 120 grit for this. To be honest, I, that's all I ever use anyway is 120. Occasionally maybe use 80 grit for fiberglass. But So I simply put it on a flat uh, sanding discs, uh, sanding plane like this. And yeah, I should be wearing a mask. Just flatten it out. Doesn't take much effort at all. Try and stick to the contour that you're rubbing down as well. So I'm going to carry on with this. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to film it all. It's, it's going to bloody rain again. So I've rubbed down the filler now. You can see it's nice and smooth, and you can really do. You really can see that it's just a real thin smudge of filler, just to get rid of all the little pits in the metal. Now I'm going to mask it up and then put some primer over it. So now it's all ready for primer. Now when you get a tin of primer. Um, you're, it all settles in the bottom and th there's no telling how long this has been on the shelf so I need to give this a real good shake there you, go, look, even that, you can hear the boys in the moving there we go, I think that's freed up a bit so when you get a tin of primer always make sure 
and you really do give it a good shake at least 10 minutes back in a moment now because it's not exactly a warm day I'm going to get my old Black & Decker heat gun and I'm just going to warm up the panel just give it because it's quite cold to touch and it's not a good idea to paint a cold panel so I'm just going to warm it up a little bit not get it hot just warm just so it's yeah not cold to the touch anymore um, before I actually put any primer on there or any paint Who says men can't multitask? Right now here's a little professional tip This is what's called a tack cloth What it is, it's kind of, it's got like a sticky substance on it and what that does is take any dust off the panel that we're going to paint We just quickly rub that over And that should remove any dust that's on here And I'll do this again once I've rubbed the primer down so that's called a tack cloth so when you go to your paint shop make sure you get a pack of these they're quite cheap and it does make a hell of a difference right so now we're ready for primer now when you're putting primer on don't go too thick especially when it's cold the panel isn't cold anymore it's, it's not cold to touch it's not warm it's not cold to touch either so we just hold it quite way back and just dust it on a little bit at a time that's all you need to do wait a little while maybe warm it up a bit more heat a bit more primer and slowly build it up like that so normally I wouldn't be doing this with a heat gun it's just because it is cold out and I don't know if it's going to rain again so I'm rushing basically so I want to carry on with this now once I've finished doing this, I'll get right back to you. So I've put about five layers now of primer on there, and I've used my heat gun to keep it nice and warm, but it's still going to take about 20 minutes for all the solvents to off gas. Um, so I'll need to leave that now before I can rub it down. But whilst I'm waiting for that to cure, I'm going to carry on rubbing down the rest of the van, all the rest of the filler that's in the van. Well, that was short lived. As you can see, it's absolutely chucking it down again. Well, at least I managed to get it in primer. I've got it primed. Oh, hello, Tom's cat. The whole thing as well, the back door's done. Down the sides of the van is in primer as well. I'll quickly go out to show you. There you go. Just so you can see, it's actually all in primer, uh, which means the rust isn't going to get any worse. But because of the rain, I'm not going to be able to finish off painting it. This weather's doing more nutting. <laughs> it's finally stopped raining. Now the next stage, now I've dried it and remasked it, is to use what's called a scotch pad. Now a scotch pad is basically it's like a like a scouring pad. And what we want to do is get rid of all the shiny surfaces so the new paint can adhere to it. So that's all this does. It, it literally takes away the shine like that. And I've already done it. So I've gone all over it with this. So now it's nice and flat, it's nice and dull. And once again, we need to go over it with our tack cloth. We get our tack cloth, go all over it, get rid of any dust. Now, the drawback of painting the outside, of course, is that there's always going to be dust. A bit of moisture there, don't worry about that. And once we've got rid of all the dust, we're happy, it's nice and clean. And then get our base coat. Now, like I said before, we'll give it a good shake. I've already been shaking this for quite a while. And then literally dust it on. Now because it's silver, we do want to just literally dust it. And that is pretty much it. Now we'll leave that 
leave that for a couple of seconds to dry off. And another coat. I can still see the primer through this. That's how thin it is. That's what we want to do, we just want to build it up slowly. Now I'm not actually going to paint this part here, I'm going to leave that because I'm going to blend it in so there's no hard, um, hard change between colours because this might not match perfectly. So around about here and here I'm not actually going to paint just going to blend it in and leave it, just feather it in. This is our main thing along the bottom where the rust was, where the primer was. We can do a bit of a bigger coat now. Like that. Right there are a number of coat goes over here, so it's not really that important. But we will get it up the sides there like that. Get that side as well. Just so it blends in. I think that'll do. Now we'll leave this to dry. Dry a bit more naturally. And then we'll put the shiny coat on. So now the base coat is dry and we can tell it's dry because it's not shiny and that's right it should not be shiny it should be dull the shine comes from the clear coat which goes on top which is basically just lacquer and I've given it a good shake now because this is pretty much um, as it says here pro clear now the nozzles on these are adjustable you can adjust how much comes out it's got a plus and a minus I don't know if you can see that I'll hold it there, as you can see, there's actually a plus and a minus, so we're going to put this on minus because it's the first layer we want just a tack, what they call a tack layer, so it's just um, a really uh, thin layer, just so it goes sticky, and then we put a thick layer on to get our shine, that's a theory anyway. So this is our real thin layer, just to let it so sticky, this is our sticky layer which we're going to put on. We want to cover a whole panel with this. Like that. It actually comes out quite fast, even on the minus. I'm pleased I put it on the minus bit. Now we're just going to leave that for a little while, let it go sticky. Don't take long. Feel it's nice and sticky. Obviously the number plate goes there so I can touch it. And that's it, we just want it a bit sticky. Now we put the thick layer on, which is the shiny coat. And we build that up like this. Up there, because we want it to be nice and shiny there. Nice thick coat there, across there. Hopefully it's warm enough and it won't run. And it's starting to rain again, which is what we don't want. But never mind, we can polish this out anyway. The nice thing about this, you can flat it back later on and polish it out to bring out a nice shine if it doesn't come out quite right. I think I've put a bit too much here. That's basically it. I do, I think. This is quite thick, this paint. Be anyway. Just trying to build it up so it shines. That'll do. If I do any more, it'll probably run. So I'm going to leave it. I've got a bit of a. See little pimples here, so we put quite enough on. But we're not looking for perfection, we just want to get rid of the rust, right? And make it look a little bit better. So I think I've done a good job there. That looks a lot better. It's got to be better than rust, right? 
There you go. Get a nice thick layer on. Because the more of this I put on, the more I can flat back and polish. But to be honest, it's such a small area. I don't think I'm going to need to do that. There you go. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's good. So now I've just got to let that dry. Let it dry. Take all the paper off. And uh, happy days. Hopefully it dries before it starts raining. <laughs> so if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Um, if you're new to my channel, do please consider subscribing. I'll put a thing down there somewhere, a little round circle with my mug on it, and I'll put a link up there to the rest of this van creation. <laughs> it's not even a build yet, because I'm still restoring it. But I guess that's all part of buying an old van. It needs restoring before we can actually turn it into a camper. Right, I'm going to shut up and... Uh, all ravenous, so I'm gonna go get something to eat while this dries. Thanks for watching, ton off an hour.